Hunter x Hunter is one of the greatest series of all time. The world it creates is as interesting as it is complex. I've spent more than a decade watching, reading, and researching all things anime and manga, so I'm qualified when I say that Yoshihiro Togashi is a creative genius. His talent as a wordsmith has conjured a resume so impressive that he is now the fifth richest mangaka of all time, leading Naruto's Kishimoto by $5 million. And considering he did inspire Naruto, Jujutsu Kaisen, and many more will cover by the end of this video, this isn't surprising. Togashi is your favorite manga author's favorite manga author. But a candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. And Togashi is as talented as he is influential. But what happens when you mix an artist that is so passionate about his craft that the fear of letting down his fans would compel him to sacrifice his own physical and mental health? With a money-hungry industry that would encourage the deterioration of its own talent, you get one of the most controversial stories in manga history. I'm The Pirate Diaries. I create weekly anime documentaries. And today, we are taking a deep dive into the beautiful but tragic story of manga's darkest open secret. Togashi was born on April 27th, 1966 in Senjo, Yamagata, Japan, a region filled with beautiful springs and breathtaking mountains. It is home to several of the most famous onsens in the entire country. Togashi claims that he had a decently pleasant childhood. He was raised in a family of five who all helped run their family's paper shop. The paper shop was modestly successful and remains so to this day. It is currently being ran by his mother. Togashi's love for manga started before he can even walk. He had already been Began drafting his own manga ideas during his first two years of elementary school. When he got a little older, he got really into video games and board games. As a teenager, he continued to work on his art, but he had started to draw inspiration from some new interests. He had become obsessed with the occult and horror films. This love would be reflected in many of his works and would carry on into his adulthood, with two of his favorite movies being Don't Look Up, a 1996 Japanese horror film, and the 1979 American horror film Dawn of the Dead. Togashi stated that one of his biggest influences is the legend legendary visual arts designer H.R. Geiger, the artistic genius behind the costume designs for the Alien movie, and various other iconic designs. By the time Togashi had entered high school, he had begun drawing manga in most of his free time, and he even joined the fine arts club at his school, but he never actually planned on drawing becoming his career. He saw it as more of a side hustle, and he would submit his short stories to various magazines. His true dream was to become a teacher, a noble ambition of developing the minds of future generations. After high school, he enrolled in Yamagata University. He would be studying studying education. During his time in college, he would develop a fascination with baseball. He not only watched it, but played the sport as an escape when he really needed some downtime. Around this time, he would also see his first notable success as an artist. When Japan's most prominent publisher, Shonen Jump Shueisha, would pick up a collection of his short stories and feature them in an offshoot of their flagship magazine. It was called Young Jump. Unlike Shonen Jump, Young Jump focused more on seinens rather than shonens. Shonen manga typically target a teenage boy audience. They are filled with action and a adventure, where the story is wrapped around a protagonist character's development or journey. The Zero to Hero stories. It is by far the most popular genre in both manga and anime. Naruto, One Piece, My Hero Academia all fall into this category. Seinen, although can have very similar concepts, often target a more adult audience, implementing things like politics, drama, and gore. They often have a through line of a philosophy or lesson that the author is trying to get across. Series like Vinland Saga, Kingdom, and Berserk all fall under this genre. Because of Togashi's obsession with the occult, cool, it's no wonder that many of his works reflect the more mature content. Togashi was very grateful to Shueisha for acknowledging his talent, but he never thought anything would come out of it. The teacher path seemed more plausible, and it seemed to be going very well. After he graduated, he was offered a full-time job as an elementary school teacher, but an unfortunate incident would occur on his very first day. Togashi showed up to class very prepared and extremely excited. I mean, why not? This was his dream he had been trying to achieve most of his life. So he walked up to the front of the class, he opened his mouth, but nothing came out. He was frozen. He didn't know if it was nerves or anxiety, but all he could see was years of hard work going down the drain. It was really soul crushing, but unknown to him, simultaneously his works that he had submitted to Shueisha had started to make small waves in the manga industry. The same year he would get a call that he had been nominated for the Hopstep Award, an award that is granted to inspiring mangaka that people in the industry should keep their eyes on. He would go on to win the competition. The one shot that would win him this award was called Sensei Tosashida, a comedy manga about a high school teacher who leaves education due to pregnancy and a new substitute teacher who was on the extremely short side would take over the class for a day. But because of his short stature, the students didn't respect him. But he didn't really stress it because he was only supposed to be there for one single lesson. But all the other teachers would leave the school for various reasons and the substitute teacher would become the teacher for all the classes. You can see why there's lots of room for chaotic hijinks. But I don't know if it was poetically ironic or some kind of internal signaling about his fear of teaching, but I find it interesting that his first successful manga was all about an anxiety riddled teacher. At the same time, 
time, he would go on to lose his job over a similar situation. Winning this award taught him that hard work does pay off, so he would create and release his next short manga almost immediately. This one was called Jura no Maduki, which released in 1987, a fantasy story that revolved around a supernatural schoolgirl. A manga director for Shonen Jump, who had been keeping his eyes on Togashi, was blown away by how much his character designs and world building improved in such a short time. Because of this, Togashi would receive a second award and honorable mention in Hop Step Magazine. He was starting to feel more confident and would set his sights on the more prestigious Tezuka Award, so he blended his love for baseball and comedy together and created Batobi Straight. It would release the very same year in 1987, but Toby Straight followed a very violent and impulsive boy whose goal was to become a captain of his school's baseball club. To me, this is where he would really start to get a grasp of the designs and character traits that would become a staple of his style, a style that was starting to win over many of the manga elites and which would allow him to achieve his dream. He would win the 34th Tezuka Award less than a year after he made it his goal. The judge's commentary really showed the potential they saw in him. The first judge would say, the main characters are powerful and they have an energetic spirit that is exhilarating. There's something really great about this author's abilities. Another would say that his protagonists are good characters and that if he can make them his own, it will be even better. But the last statement really summarizes what Togoshi could be. Quote, the fact that you can portray a story with such a ridiculous setting, but still have such great seriousness while also still getting your point across is just amazing. Togashi was riding a high from all his years of hard work being validated. He was starting to feel less depressed about his original dream slipping away. Manga was becoming his escape and he would dump everything he had into it. Every second of every day he would be drawing or brainstorming ideas. He practically became a hikamori. He stopped hanging out with his friends and he even stopped contacting his family. Togashi would release two more mangas in 1987. Tonda Birthday Present and The Occult Taunty Don. If you're a Hunter Hunter fan, you may be foaming at the map with jealousy over this rapid release schedule that the early Togashi fans were being blessed with. If you were unaware of the hiatus hiatus this meme? Trust me, we will get to that later. Togashi had abandoned any ideas of teaching at this point. He was putting all of his effort into manga, which was risky because competition is high in Japan for aspiring manga artists, but he is just an obsessive and now he had decided to believe in himself. This belief, as well as his insane work ethic, would pay off just a few months later. He would receive a call from an ambitious editor that worked for Shonen Jump. The editor was reaching out to him to offer him a full-time job creating manga, as long as he was okay with moving to Tokyo immediately. Togashi wasted no time and he hopped on the next train to the manga capital of the world. He was now a professional mangaka and he was about to give his dream everything he had. If you would like to help me accomplish my own dreams of becoming the king of anime YouTube, just like and subscribe for weekly anime documentaries. The lot go for this video is 199. His first professional release in Shonen Jump would be a collection of comedic short stories called I'm Not Afraid of the Wolf. It would be seen very well. Because of this, he would be granted an official reoccurring slot in the magazine. This was an incredibly rare and exciting opportunity for him. This is where he would debut his next manga called Tempered Cupid in Heaven. It ran from 1989 to 1990. It was a romance etchy mystery and it followed a romance between a normal human boy and a beautiful devil girl. He seems to really have a thing for protagonists to have attitudes. It's a really fun read but it definitely wasn't his strongest genre and it would ultimately get pulled from serialization. But Togashi wasn't about to give up. He decided to take an analytical look at the current landscape of the manga community. What was and wasn't working. He realized that he had been niching down too hard. His talent was there but he didn't target a big enough audience. He discovered that all the most popular manga were all shonen mangas. The two series that ruled Japan at the time was Dragon Ball and Slam Dunk, which both fell under this genre. He was hesitant at first because action manga are heavily carried by their art, and he felt that his action scenes were his weakest area as an artist. But he took a shot anyway, and he would combine his various and unique interests for his next project, while also changing his delivery in a way that could be enjoyed by the masses, which is how the paradigm shift in manga Yu Yu Hakusho was born. Yu Yu Hakusho tells the story of Yusuke Urameshi, a teenage delinquent who was struck and killed by a car while attempting to save a child's life. After a number of tests presented to him by Kuenma, who is the son of the ruler of the underworld, Yusuke is revived and he is given the title of spirit detective. He must investigate various cases involving demons and apparitions. Oh, and he kicks plenty of ass while doing it. Togashi fused his love for the occult horror films and mixed in some inspirations from the Buddhist mythology. To me, Yu Hakusho was a genre bending masterpiece. It perfected many of the shonen tropes that came before it while simultaneously creating many of the future tropes that later would become the norm as mangaka after mangaka tried to recapture the magic of Togashi's first hit. And a quick hot take, Yu Yu Hakusho is definitely the best isekai of all time. I'm not sure if many anime fans would even classify it as one, being that it predated many of the tropes that make up the current isekai format. But before Reborn and Another World anime like ReZero reincarnated as a slime and Overlord took over the anime community, you had Yusuke Urameshi who died, was reborn, and his adventures through the spirit realm. 
long. The series did many things well. World building, slow burn twist, character development, and the best damn tournament arc in all of manga and anime. Also, Togashi doesn't get enough credit for his character's fashion sense. His outfit designs are so cold, and even 20 years later, they are dripping on many of the newer anime characters. Plus, I'm just a Botan sim. She looks good in anything she wears, especially that red jacket. I know the cool thing is that his characters actually change clothes. The series feels so different than anything that came before and after it. It was more adult than its contemporaries, but still had the flashiness that was a staple of Shonen Jump's biggest hits. It could be enjoyed by anyone of any age. The protagonist felt so different than your typical hero. Yusuke perfectly told the lines between being an asshole and being likable. He was mean, but he was funny. You still wanted to root for him. This is where he also perfected one of his best abilities, crafting outstanding villains. So many of his villain or villain groups are just awesome. When he wanted you to hate somebody, oh, you really hated them. And when he was creating an anti-hero, one that he wanted you to hate but understand, it was done beautifully tragic. Way before there was a pain, there was a Tagoro. He also became a genius at committed delivery by this point. And I feel like comedy is the hardest thing to transfer culturally. Most jokes are very localized. And this is why there isn't many mainstream comedy animes. Even the big ones like Gintama get dropped a lot in their very first season. And it's because most of the jokes only make sense if you understand local Japan culture or politics. But I remember watching the first episode of Yu Yu Hakusho and actually laughing out loud, especially at Kurabara. He is hilarious and deserves more love. Plus his name is a callback to Togashi's love for baseball as Kurabara's name is two baseball players names put together. The chemistry between the characters feels so natural and realistic. They are flawed people, but they learn a lot from their journey, but not always. Sometimes they just have to accept their flaws. They are just living their lives day to day, trying to overcome the difficulties that have been placed in their life's path. This is so true in the real world as well. Life isn't always easy. All you can do is make the most out of it. He had put everything he had into the manga and it would pay off. It was a smash across Japan, ultimately selling 78 million copies. This was way before manga was popular worldwide. So these numbers are extremely impressive and it has since become a cult classic over the years. Even though one of his next works would be even bigger in popularity, many people still love his breakthrough series to this day. Tragically, the success of Yu Yu Hakusho will ultimately start the clock on Togashi's downfall, both physically and mentally. He had already been burning the candle at both ends for years now. At this point, he was already skipping entire nights of sleep because he couldn't risk missing his deadlines. Stress was now becoming a factor for the first time, as now he actually had people to let down. Because he was now practically a recluse, he didn't really have any friends to vent to, so this all weighed very heavy on him. A scary result of his relentless work schedule is that he was developing back pain, which was odd because he was still in his early 20s. The sharp pain was a result of him being hunched over in his work chair for so many hours on end, but he pushed through it because it wasn't bad enough to impact his work. When Togashi wasn't creating manga, he was practicing his drawing abilities. He had improved a lot, but he still felt that his action panels fell short of other shonen titans, but he just didn't want to let his fans down, having the weakest art of all the big series. But just a few arcs into the series, he was really starting to master the concept. He was getting really good, particularly at action perspectives and negative space drawing. By the dark tournament arc, his drawing skills could hang with the best of the genre. He also cleverly doubled down on his strengths of character development and diverting expectations. I think this was a wise idea. Instead of just improving his weaknesses, he got better at his strengths as well. This made people fall in love with specific characters, giving them their own individual fan bases. Thanks to his methodical planning and hard work, Dragon Ball, Slam Dunk, and Yu Yu Hakusho was now seen as equals. The three was carrying Shonen Jump on their backs during the early 1990s. And in 1993, Togashi was selected for the Shoga Kukan Manga Award. This was the most respected and oldest award in the entirety of manga. But Yu Yu Hakusho fans would soon be heartbroken. While still at the peak of his popularity, the series would end abruptly. Only one year after Togashi would win the career defining award, this left many fans confused and wondering why he would abandon his hit series. I mean, technically it had two endings because depending on how you consume the series, you got a slightly different one because the anime altered the ending to try to remedy the controversies of the manga's finale. But to no avail, both endings felt incredibly rushed when compared to the brilliant pacing that Togashi became known for. The true reason behind the controversial ending of Yu Yu Hakusho would be revealed years later by Togashi himself. The author stated that he was mentally exhausted and he had been battling his publishers to get later deadlines for years just so he could recover from the damage he had done to his body. He said they straight up refused and wouldn't even entertain the notion. Sadly, his story isn't uncommon in the manga industry. Manga publishers control 100% of the negotiation power. There is only a couple major players in the industry, so if you get blacklisted by an industry titan like Shueisha, decades of hard work are flushed down the drain. Your career is over just like that. With newcomers, it's even worse because they can end your career before it even starts. With competition being so high, they can replace you very easily, so they have no problem denying you vacation days or deadline extensions, even if it's for health reasons. Togashi's case was particularly detrimental because his health decline had already been going on for years at this point, and it would only get worse. The primary 
Mary Calls was being hunched over for hours on end in his work chair while skipping meals and nights of sleep, which is both needed to help your body recover. It's a popular theory that publishers create and possible to meet deadlines on purpose so that authors have no choice but to be creative 24 seven and just focus on their work. Togashi's current deadlines had him working seven days a week and having many sleepless nights. And even then he was still barely making them. If you were wondering why he didn't stand his ground, he said that he felt like he couldn't argue because he was still so new to the industry. So he had a fear of having his dream taken away from him. Ironically, if they would have allowed him to have his recovery period, he might've been able to continue the series way longer, which would have benefited both parties more. In a Q and A, we learned that because of this slave-like work schedule, he actually wanted to end the series way before we even thought with the intentions of ending it on a high note after one of his favorite arcs. Then he would have time to feel better and then continue with a healthy mind and body. But when he recommended this to Shonen Jump, he was told this wasn't allowed because it was just too popular. In an unofficial manga, he admitted, quote, I wanted to end the series after the chapter black arc. It would have been a great way to end on a high note and allow me to get some rest, but they just forced me to keep going and drawing. Around this time, he did another interview and he was asked, what was the most painful thing that happened while you was writing your Yu Hanka show? He replied, quote, around the time Yusuke was fighting Sensui was when I just didn't want to draw anymore. And I asked the editorial office if I could quit Yu Hanka show for the very first time. Something about the way he worded this statement doesn't sound like he means physical pain, but that the most painful thing to him was that the company that he had poured blood, sweat, and tears into that he thought cared about him at least a little bit wouldn't even entertain him stopping or slowing down even if it could save his health or life. It just made him incredibly sad, all because they might make a little less money. This really shows the tremendous power that Shonen Jump holds over its authors. Once he started getting chest pains, he realized that he had to end it anyway. He also mentioned that he still loves and cares for the manga to this day, and ending it the way he did is one of his life's regrets. That he even had a vision of one final tournament arc, but by then, fight scenes have become too demanding. Man, can you imagine how awesome that arc would have been? Shonen Jump, you kind of took that away from us. As a perfectionist, he stated that he feels like he could have told a much better story if he was just given a little more time by his publishers. You can sense how frustrated he was at his bosses by this statement. All in all, Togashi said that he has about 50 reasons he came up with to end Yu Yu show, but most of them can be summed up by three major categories. One was the destruction of his body. The second being thoughts about what it really means to draw manga. And last, but the absolute darkest being that he had a desire to do other things besides work, anything else. But he fears that point three is out of the question for a professional manga writer. He would go on to say, quote, basically, I wanted to indulge in some hobbies, meet some friends and rest or sleep as much as I can. Toward the end of Yu Yu show, I would actually try to get a bit of sleep, but I would immediately fall behind on my work schedule. This conundrum would cause him to fall into a deeper despair. He would end the statement sharing his deepest fear. Quote, I don't want to die from overwork. If I die, I want it to be while having fun or when I'm drawing manga for fun, not while I'm being forced to work by threats of being fired. He actually thought he might pass away from how hard he was working. Let that sink in. The creator of Bleach even spoke out about this situation happening to him too. While working on his first professional series, Zombie Powder, Kubo admitted he had a mental breakdown because of his impossible to meet deadlines. When he did finally miss a submission, his series would be canceled. I will cover all of this in my Bleach video if you guys want it, so let me know in the comments if it interests you. The idea of working yourself not alive isn't uncommon in Japanese culture. It's so normal that there is even a word for it called kararoshi that literally translates to overworked death. Corporate life in Japan can be so intense that many salaried men often pass out on the sidewalks or even on train rides home from pure exhaustion. Throughout researching kararoshi, you will learn about the horror stories of people passing away while still working or Japan's unalive yourself pandemic. After this video, if you want to to learn more about this specific topic or the 24 year old Matsuri Takahashi whose unfortunate demise would have a positive outcome on this overworked culture, I dedicated an entire segment to it in my Ichiro Oda video. If you want to check it out, skip the 20 minutes and 4 seconds in if you only care about that part. Being terrified of this fate for himself, Togashi took a full year off to recover from his back pain, but he missed having a creative outlet. So as soon as he could handle drawing again, he created and released his next series, a comedic science fiction manga called Level E. It ran from 1995 to 1997. This time, he was on a monthly release schedule instead of a weekly one, which was perfect for him. He was only able to get this schedule because Yu Yu Hakusho's popularity continued to grow in his absence. This granted him the bargaining power he needed to leverage better hours. Level E follows the misadventures of the alien prince Baka, who crash lands on Earth and forcibly begins living with a high school student and baseball player. However, Prince Baka gradually realizes he is being targeted by aliens from other planets, but he uses his clever wits to maintain world peace each time. The manga had a much more realistic art style than its previous works, and it got pretty dark, but somehow it focuses a lot more on humor as well. It's pretty funny, and in 2011, it even received the anime adaptation. I only watched a few episodes in preparation for this video, but I definitely feel like it's going to be a hidden gem, so I will check it out, as I'm personally going to
finish it later. The year was now 1997 and level E was in its final season. Togashi was trying to start socializing more and would go to a party for Shueisha artists. It was hosted by Kasushi Hagiwara, creator of the series Bastard. During this event, Togashi was introduced to Naoko Takeuchi, the creator of the legendary series Sailor Moon, one of the most popular mangas and animes of all time. The two would hit it off and go on several dates over the next year. On January 6, 1999, the two would get married. At this time, Togashi was famously an introvert who barely even left his house, which is where we get this famous photo of him in his room playing Dragon Quest, surrounded by his field. So many spectators wondered, like, how did he pull such a beautiful, talented, and outgoing wife? Well, in a video interview, Naoko stated her traits for a perfect man. Number one, she said it is very important that he is kind. And Togashi is well known for just being a really nice and sweet guy. I couldn't find one person that had anything bad to say about him. Even his employees love working for him. This explains why so many of his stories promote compassion and empathy. And number two, he has to be capable. Let's be honest, they might not be a more capable person out there. Many authors go their entire lives trying to create a masterpiece and Togashi has created two of the most iconic series of all time. And him and his wife would later create their own children's book that would also perform very well. During this time, Togashi was flourishing both mentally and physically, but Shonen Jump on the other hand was struggling. They had lost all of their flagship series back to back. Yu Yu Hakusho ended in 1994, Dragon Ball in 1995, and Slam Dunk in 1996. The magazine was struggling to find its new identity. They would take a shot on a unique pirate based manga called One Piece in 1997, and we all know how that would turn out, but One Piece hadn't become a hit yet. But lucky for them, Togashi had been working on a new manga in private with the help of his wife. So in 1998, Togashi would release the iconic manga Hunter x Hunter. The story follows Gon, a young boy who discovers his absentee father is actually a famous hunter, and he decides to become a hunter himself in hopes of finding him. In the universe, hunters are professionals who get to decide what they want to do in life and what they are passionate about and then become that kind of hunter. Like you can become a disease hunter and focus your talents on finding cures for diseases. Or like a gourmet hunter who tries to find the best ingredients for gourmet food. Which brings me to a theory I have. If Gon's goal is to find his dad, who is a hunter, and Gon is also a hunter himself, that would literally make Gon a hunter hunter. Which is where I think the series got its name. Now Togashi has admitted that the whole concept of hunters came to him because he's a collector himself. Somewhat of a hoarder. But that doesn't explain the second hunter. When the first volume released, it was pretty much an instant hit. And Togashi would make sure to let his wife know how grateful he was for her helping him by leaving a special message thanking her at the end of the volume. While creating Hunter x Hunter, Togashi tried to create something truly special. He would no longer let outside forces influence his vision or release schedule. The world building is immaculate, the character designs are top tier, and he might have created the best power system in all of anime. His characters were so good that it's hard to pick a favorite. In some parts, it felt like Killua was the main character instead of Gon, and in others, it felt like Kropika was. Hunter x Hunter somehow feels nostalgic and simultaneously like it was ahead of its time. I appreciated how many mature subjects were implemented into the story. When I started Hunter x Hunter, based on the art style, I expected your typical run-of-the-mill shonen, but some parts were so dark I was actually shocked, and others were so emotional I shed a tear. Togashi's writing is just so immersive. I even enjoyed the B stories, like when we would follow villains like the Phantom Troop or Miriam. As we mentioned, Togashi decided to create a hunt-based manga because he himself loved to collect and find cool stuff, so much so that the aforementioned photo of him playing Dragon Quest surrounded by trash, he used as a self-insert in the Green Island art. Hunter x Hunter was pretty much a smash hit almost immediately, and it would go on to be one of the most beloved but controversial mangas ever. As of the time of this video, it has sold over 84 million copies and received not one, but two anime adaptations. One in 1999 and one in 2011. They both have their own charm. This is very impressive, especially when you factor in that the series never technically had an ending. Many of Togashi's health issues would start to resurface after the first arc. The damage done to him in his early years as a mangaka had apparently had lifelong repercussions. He would soon start taking longer and longer hiatuses. Even though Shonen Jump rightfully allowed it this time, it made many of his fans sad that the chapter break weeks turned into break months and eventually even break years. The breaks became so frequent it became a meme to call it hiatus hiatus instead of Hunter x Hunter. There is even entire websites dedicated to tracking the break weeks and various stats of Hunter x Hunter's release schedule. They even used charts and graphs. He tried to work through the pain as much as he could because he was just so excited to be creating again. But by the time he reached the Chimera Ant arc, his drawings had deteriorated into doodles and he had stopped drawing background art almost entirely. But the story was just so good that people celebrated each time a chapter dropped, regardless of the art. The longest hiatus would be around four years when his health was at its worst. He recently admitted that during this period, he was bedridden and even needed help using the bathroom. So for four years, Hunter x Hunter fans thought all hope was lost. Then on a magical day in 2022, something happened. An anonymous Twitter page with a bot generated at name started posting the corners of 
manga panels and drafts. And some of them you can make out like a tree sketch. But very soon, fans deduced that it was Yoshihiro Togashi. The GOAT himself had made a Twitter account and was hinting at a Hunter x Hunter comeback. This completely broke the weeps out of the internet. Every anime YouTube channel and blog was discussing Hunter x Hunter's potential return. His Twitter gained over 2.1 million followers in less than 72 hours. This made him the most followed mangaka on all of Twitter, just days after creating an account. At the time of this video, he says that 2.9 million followers, with second place being My Hero Academia Horikoshi, who has 2.5 million. The speculation that this account was Togashi's was actually confirmed when the creator of One Punch Man said, yo, that's really him, after he looked into it because he was a big fan himself and was just as excited as the rest of us. The way that Togashi came out of retirement and instantly became a top dog again is truly impressive. He may have never became a teacher, but I personally do believe he accomplished his dream of impacting and influencing generations of the youth and adults. Togashi truly is your favorite manga author's favorite manga author. Kishimoto, the creator of Naruto, said that he considers Togashi his favorite mangaka. In a 2009 interview, Kishimoto mentioned that his famous shadow clone Jutsu was quote, significantly inspired by Suzaku's approach from Yu Yu Hakusho. Suzaku can conjure seven after images, but they can actually do physical damage and retain knowledge while also gathering information that helps him fight better. Kishimoto thought the idea felt very authentic and extremely innovative. He also liked Togashi's idea of introducing many of the main characters in an exam style arc early on as a way to show off their powers and potential. Hisaka and Orochimaru are both obsessed with kids in a flirty slash sinister way. And the biggest and most obvious influence that Kishimoto got from Togashi is the backstory and ideas for Sasuke, Itachi, and the rest of the Uchiha clan. They were definitely inspired by Kuropika's origins. A clan massacre, magic red eyeball powers, some people who tried to collect said eyeballs, and a soul survivor's quest for revenge. And I'm also pretty certain that Sasuke was influenced by Killua and Hiei. Speed, darkness, and lightning based attacks with a dark attitude that contrasts the happy go lucky best friend and an evil older brother. The two authors are on very good terms and even did a joint interview together. The interview was a non stop compliment battle with both creators giving each other their flowers. Kishimoto explains that he was a big fan of Togashi's work before he ever began writing manga. He mentioned that Hiei was his favorite character and how he would think of him whenever he was designing his own characters because he wasn't able to create quote cool characters in the beginning. Kishimoto also talked about how he was very lucky as he was able to meet Togashi when he was coming up and that he was very nice, that he read some of his work, even Naruto's first couple chapters. He would go on to give him some tips and even give him a tour of his studio. Togashi explained how impressed he was with Kishimoto and how he was so talented from the very beginning and that he particularly liked the scene of Naruto where Kakashi fights Team 7 while still holding his book and emphasized how impressed he was with Kishimoto's drawing skills. And just to prove Togashi is still influential to this day, Jujutsu Kaisen is one of the biggest manga and animes to come out in recent years. And it is so influenced by Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho that there are dozens of articles written analyzing all the similarities. And given a cute and funny story that the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen told in an issue of Shonen Jump, it's fair to say these theories are justified. He told the story about how he had some visitors come over to his house and they kept commenting on the fact that they were Hunter x Hunter mangas everywhere. He said it was quote, very embarrassing, but he said it in a lot harder way. The current status of Hunter x Hunter is kind of unknown. Togashi did release a few chapters after his Twitter post and they was all received incredibly well, but he very soon went on another hiatus. But in one of the tweets, he did say that he was finally increasing his staff after many years, which should release some of his stress and workload, allowing him to work more hours on things he really wants to. There are some rumors that he's actually planning on releasing some chapters under a different magazine than the Weekly Shonen Jump. This would be huge for the manga industry. That being said, there was one huge and exciting announcement that came out while I was creating this video. Togashi is set to release Kurapika's Memories Part 2, a follow-up from Part 1 that released in 2013. Hunter x Hunter fans are finally eating once more, but if you take anything from this video, it's allow artists time to rest and create, and you will get a much better story because of it. Trust me, I relate to your frustrations, I'm addicted to content as well, but it's the least we can do as fans. From the entire Power Diaries crew, rest up Togashi, thank you for everything, and get well soon.